Any questions? One Ram, Abdullah. You're happy. Good. It's good to see you happy. Okay. Any questions from yesterday? So that we just uh, then dig in. Questions, questions. No questions. Okay. Chalo. Let's start. Okay. So I gave you a homework. Uh, the homework was this. Okay. Now, can you see these curves clearly? Let me just magnify them a bit. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. So now, let's start from here. What is what is this happening? This is obviously a stretch. You have the resting uh, length of the muscle right here, and then you started stretching from this point to this point, and then you kept it there as we discussed yesterday. Yes. Now during this point and this point. All sorts of stuff is happening here. This is 1A, also called the primary, and this is 2, type 2, which is also called secondary. So, does anyone, anyone want to have a dig at this? Can anybody explain what is happening in 1A and 2? We are focusing on 1A and 2 right now. Okay. Yes, no? Nobody wants to talk? 1A impulses increase, yes, during the stretch, yes. So, you are clearly seeing that as the muscle is being stretched, you clearly see that the barrage of impulses are increasing as well. They were at the resting level before, but they clearly... In Welcome back. G. That's right, Hafsa. That's right. Yes, Abdullah, you're right. Steep portion is dynamic response. Well done, Aisha. So you guys know already. I wanted to say this with a drumming beat in the background, but you know this. So this is the dynamic response. Okay. Static, 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 dynamic. Yes. What just happened, do you understand? Do you understand that this is the dynamic response while the rest is static? Yes? Okay. If most of you are okay with this, let's move on to the middle of this graph. Okay, so good. That's good. I'm happy. Now, let's move to this part of the graph. Let me shift it like this. Maybe a bit better so we are now talking about the tap okay so imagine you are in front of a patient and you are asked to elicit the knee jerk the knee jerk right you take your uh, uh, reflex hammer and you strike the tendon the patellar tendon of this patient okay now what will happen is that the knee will be extended, the lower limb will be extended at the knee. Yes. So, this is what, this is what's happening. So, as soon as, so the muscle was at its resting length, okay, and as soon as you struck it, uh, decline, as soon as you struck it, okay, it increased its uh, its uh, it dist it extend it stretched it suddenly okay and what happened then it the stretch decreased suddenly as well and then it was business as usual this is what happened in the tap scenario right 
So the top panel of this diagram is the, the stimulus, the, the stretch stimulus. So do you understand what the stretch stimulus is? Welcome back. Since the tap was sudden, the stretch was sudden and the coming back from the stretch was sudden as well. Yes? Okay, so you can now see that 1A clearly detected it with this barrage of increased firing of the ah, Somebody asked me why is the why is there a blank here? Who, who was it? Could you repeat? Just identify yourself. Who asked me about this space in the impulses? Yes, Solat. Yes. Good good question. Hold, hold on to that question. So as soon as the rate of change, so this is basically, if I may say so, if I may say so, this is a rate of change tap, is it not? It's hardly any uh, amount of length of change tap. It's a rate of change scenario, isn't it? Because it's so quick and the, and the change, in length, uh, in change in length of the muscle is so small, it's sort of all about the rate of change. Yeah? So to extend that understanding, if it's a rate of change scenario, then really it's all about 1A, the primary response. And here it is, right here. And you can see that this is a, a bit of a disarray here. It, it, it was minding its own business. This was the resting uh, firing rate. It did pick something. I mean, it's really slow. It, you can see that it's, it's like one extra bar here. So it did pick it, but really it wasn't really a match for the uh, the speed of the tap. It is really 1A with its dynamics uh, response capability that it picked it very very accurately. So whenever there is a sudden stretch, sudden change in uh, uh, stretch of a muscle, it's 1A through its dynamic response that picks it. Okay? Need some feedback guys. So if, okay, all right, Sahih. So now coming to the question. Now, this is, this is the behavior of uh, these interfusal fibers, the nuclear bag fiber and nuclear chain, especially nuclear bag fiber. What happens is when nuclear bag is stretched suddenly, it overshoots, okay? It, it gets stretched, welcome back. So as I was saying, Abdullah, easy on the essays, relaxation from the state attached to explains the gap. Hold on, hold on, I'm explaining it. So, th the overshoot explains the barrage of impulses which it's supposed to give so that the CNS is apprised of what has happened. However, right after the overshoot, it goes quiet. This is the habit of these interfusal fibers. Similarly, you have the chain fiber, it also goes quiet. Okay, and this is to this is related to its viscoelastic properties. If you really want to dive into it, remind me on WhatsApp. I'll I'll send you a, a, a small note about it, and you and you'll get it. Okay, but for the rest of you, and generally, for the understanding is, when an intrafusal fiber is stretched, it tends to overshoot, and then go quiet. Overshoot, quiet. Okay, and then after a while, it comes out of its uh, quote unquote shock and resumes its activity. Yes? Okay. So, similarly, you can now describe very easily the sinusoidal situation, the sinusoidal stretch. Okay. Uh, you can see that as it stretches, right, uh, the 1A responds, so does the 2, but not to uh, uh, much extent. And as soon as it's unstretched, it goes quiet. Stretch, increase firing rate, unstretch, silent. Okay, straightforward, right? Okay, now let's move on to the 
release I think this is pretty clear okay so when you released it since it's not being stretched when you release it it's not being stretched it's just coming down unrele un unstretching the obviously 1a will have nothing to do with it it's really uh, and even you can see if you can minutely see the distance between the bars has increased uh, so it is obviously not picking up much stretch still at every point here the muscle is uh, uh, no doubt stretched from its ba basic level although it's coming down the lane welcome back so in uh, uh, decrease firing rate in fiber type 2 however one is just quiet because there is nothing dynamic going on okay this was this graph this is again uh, maybe I didn't mention it this is not in Guyton however it explains uh, this sort of thing very nicely that's why I picked it off uh, if you have any other questions which come on later you can always ask me uh, on whatsapp or the video wherever okay Chalo. let's move on ah what do we have here go on read it can we stretch a muscle without stretching it we can Aisha how remember the first uh, uh, functional anatomy class that we took on muscle spindle I discussed that muscle spindle can be stretched by whole muscle stretch and what else now see you, you guys are not revising your stuff I see from the gamma motor Rahim well done gamma motor remember guys these uh, these uh, two three lectures two have been delivered this is the third they are very uh, very connected okay so you need to have the prior knowledge to to understand uh, the present lecture so do invest in it over the weekend and try to review them okay so what's happening here this by the way is rubber band okay I am sorting it out to play a little game with you guys okay can you see the rubber band yes rubber band rubber band this is the rubber band yes yes I'm stretching the rubber band you can see the stretch stretch unstretch stretch unstretch okay now imagine imagine that this is the intrafusal fiber let's say welcome back back so when we uh, uh, stretch the whole muscle obviously the thingy gets stretched because the whole muscle is being stretched okay now Nay Abdullah it's not passive stretch okay when you stretch the whole muscle the whole thing gets stretched that is not uh, anything complicated that's pretty straightforward stuff okay now remembering drawing from your knowledge of the innervation of muscle spindle do you remember that the intrafusal fibers are supplied at the tapering ends the tapering ends by gamma efferents yes so when those gamma efferents they get triggered they are stimulated they tend to tug pull on the polar ends of the muscle spindle okay and when they do that what do they do they stretch look at the center of the uh, of this uh, rubber band it gets stretched because it they are not supplying here they are supplying at the ends okay so when they when they contract they are con they're, they're contracting their own polar regions which which is where my fingers are however because it's all one continuous structure the center bit gets stretched right so muscle spindle can be stretched in two ways as we discussed one is whole muscle length 
and the other is activating the gamma efferents okay now if if you stretch the uh, uh, whole muscle and it gets stretched that's fine okay and it's sensitive okay now if you contract the muscle what is going to happen when you contract the muscle the spindle may go lax this is what i was trying to exhibit yesterday i thought let me just demonstrate it with a rubber band this is the fear this is the fear look at this this is the fear when muscle will contract the 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 spindle may go lax like this stretches upon contraction no these are two different things abdullah we are saying these are two different things i am just introducing the contraction now okay up till now we have only been discussing stretching okay i am only discussing i have only discussed stretching up till this point from now on i am also attempting to explain to you what will happen in contraction okay are you clear on the whole muscle stretching induces a stretch on the muscle spindle that bit is clear right then the gamma efferents uh, when they work they also stretch the muscle spindle is that clear as well abdullah yes uh, abdullah where are you He is probably writing another essay here. Chalo, we we need to proceed. Abdullah, if you have any questions, you can always ask me later. Okay. Now, so we are clear on those two scenarios. Now, I am trying to tell you that a, a totally different scenario. Okay, another scenario. Another scenario is if you now contract the muscle, not stretch it, but actually contract it. So the muscle now is the extra fusel fibers are coming together. It's contracting. Okay. since these guys these little guys are in parallel to the extra fusel fibers there is a fear that they will go they will go lax like this okay they will relax and if they relax the cns will not be appraised of the changing in the muscle length during muscle contractions isn't that the problem that we discussed yesterday yes we got this is the pro, this is the problem that we discussed yesterday that we want sensory information about the length to continuously go to cns during all the stretching and all the contractions both there is no fun in not sending information on contraction which by the way is the main uh, okay so what do you do well what you do is you contract both muscle fibers extrafusal and intrafusal you contract extrafusal through alpha motor neurons right and at the same time you coactivate the word is coactivate we will be discussing this uh, again uh, next week okay in a dedicated point but let me just say it here so you coactivate gamma efferents along with those alpha efferents what's the benefit the benefit is that when the gamma efferents are activated along with the alpha efferents these guys are stretched okay and now look at the center when they are at their resting level the the response is all right look at this response can you see it vibrating no no bete not not very good question uh, abdullah very good question but no the lack of anything is just lack if there is no <clears throat> i mean hypothetically you may say that yes it could have been configured like that but it's not config configured like that 
it all depends on action potentials being generated from this portion here to the CNS and then CNS calculates what's going on. And remember, it's not just the amount of action potentials, it's the timeline of action potentials as well. Okay, so the whole thing is quite complex. It's the timeline and the amount of action potentials which gets computed at the higher centers and then the higher centers, uh, they, uh, they figure out, okay, okay, the muscle has gone into stretching or contraction. Okay, now during contraction in co-activation scenario, when you have stretched it like this, extra stretch, look at the center response now. It is very brisk. Okay, it's very sensitive now. When you don't stretch it, the, the response is all right. But when you stretch it, and now you do it, it is very sensitive to any small change in the length. So during contraction, the muscles, this, uh, these interfusal fibers are under a stretched situation under the gamma efferent contraction, induced contraction. So they are more sensitive to any changes in lengths, which... Yes, welcome back. This is, this was a bit of a sidestep to be honest. This, I was just paving my way for the next, for the next week lecture. We have done two things better in this slide. One is this. Can you stretch the muscle spindle without stretching it? Basically trying to outline here the effect of gamma efferents. Okay. While I was at it, I thought, let me just also put in a, put in a suggestion in your ear that co-activation uh, and contraction scenario which we discuss dedicatedly next week uh, you actually have benefit uh, of this whole of this whole thing okay of the gamma efferent uh, innervation okay we move on okay now this diagram you are familiar with you are familiar with this part of the diagram this part we did this yesterday remember this part we did along with the bottom line oh sorry the bottom the stretch so maybe too close so this here was discussed along with this line okay now I will just Actually, you can just see it from here, literally. You can just see it from here. And it's a very simple thing. It says response of 1A sensory fiber to selective activation of motor neurons. So in one, he has stimulated the static gamma fiber. And in the other, he has, excuse me, he has stimulated the dynamic fiber let me just show it to you so that the static gamma fiber and the dynamic gamma fiber okay okay just to give you some context why are we uh, uh, studying this diagram is to tell you some a bit more obviously we are digging in we are going into details here welcome back we were saying in the previous slide, then, then when you activate the gamma efferents, uh, the sensitivity of the muscle spindle enhances. Yes? Can we summarize the last slide in this fashion? When we activate the gamma efferents, the sensitivity of the muscle spindle increases. Can we summarize it like that? So with, with that in mind, with those words in mind, let's look at this now. So gamma efferents, we, we've just mentioned gamma efferents, gamma efferents are of two types, static, dynamic, okay? So this is just extending our understanding that, okay, it does increase the sensitivity, but how? 
a bit more detail because we've read two types of gamma efferents, static and dynamic. So now you see that when it was stretched only, and this is now where you will find this diagram to be very, very nice. Okay. Oops. When it's stretch only here, this is the default, this is the default dynamic and static responses of a muscle spindle fiber, okay, which is not under the influence of any gamma efferent. Okay, we have not activated gamma efferents here. This is the natural default response of a muscle spindle fiber 1A, by the way. This is the response of 1A. Uh, in in, in uh, uh, Abdullah, in conscious contractions, voluntary contractions, yes. Most of voluntary contractions, um, they involve alpha and gamma both. They get discharged uh, simultaneously. More on this later. Okay. Let me just remove this. So do you understand that this bit here is its default? Now, you activate the static gamma fiber. Again, I assume that you understand the anatomy. You know exactly where the... In Welcome back. He keeps on uh, going off on my vital points. Look at the red line, this red line. Okay, this is where he has activated the... At this point here, he has activated the gamma efferent. Okay, so before the gray area, the gray area was the... What is this area? This area is when the muscle was being stretched, remember? Okay, I can't show the diagram, it's down there. This, this gray area is where the muscle is being actively stretched incrementally like this, remember? Okay, so very importantly now, check this out. He has activated the static gamma before the stretch before the stretch and look at the 1A response. It has gone up. The impulses per second have gone up. Why? You know why. You know why? Because in the absence of muscle stretch, you can still stretch muscle spindle. We just did it. We just said it. So when you activate static gamma fiber, it, it has stretched the static component of the muscle spindle okay and we know that 1a innervates both bag and chain fibers so this bit here is basically the response of the nuclear chain fiber the people who have not done their anatomy it would be uh, very uncomfortable at this moment okay so please at the end of this lecture if you if you miss this point please do first revise the innervation from Guyton or from the lecture whatever is convenient right so when you activated gamma uh, static type of fiber one a static component goes up because it gets stretched the nuclear chain fibers get stretched now on this on this thing that while the spindle is already stretched by the by the static gamma now you stretch the whole muscle it's already, look at this, this is the muscle spindle. It was like this here. When you, st when you stimulated the static gamma, it went here. Now you stretch the whole muscle. It, it, it goes. Welcome back. So now you understand that this, this baseline is here. It went up here. Why? I've already explained that. And now you, on top of this whole setup, now you stretch the muscle, whole muscle. It will then... In, further increase its firing rate up to this point at which point you stopped the stretch and you kept it there so this is the static response of a muscle okay which whose muscle spindle is under the static gamma efferent fiber activate activation is this okay it sounds complicated but it's, it's, it's information which is incremental. So if you understand the previous information, 
Yes, it has doubled indeed. If you understand the previous lectures, this is very cool stuff indeed. Yes, Ahmed, yes. Because Solop, because we activated it better. Because we, 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 this is just an experimental thing. They hooked it up with uh, electrodes. Okay. So in real scenario, what happens, we will discuss it next week. I just want to absolutely solidify uh, dynamic and static responses in your heads. And the effect of gamma efferents, the relationship of gamma efferents with the muscle spindle. If it's clear, the next week will be very good, very comfortable. If it's not, then next week will be hell. I'm telling you this. Okay? Now. No, bete. Zen, no, good question. Both uh, gamma is unconscious. Gamma is brain's unconscious bits activated. All right, good question. Now, the coolest part will come to you when you compare this graph with this graph. Go on. Compare the static, because this is all static response. Compare the, uh, the static response here. Look at the, the distance from the baseline here. This, is, this was the static response, remember I explained it yesterday. And now compare it from here. This is the baseline and look, welcome back. You know, it goes offline at the most crucial point. You know, what is this equivalent to? One of you always used to enter the class when I was emphasizing on a point. Did, do you remember? It always happens with me. When I am super emphasizing on a very complicated point and I am just on the cusp of it, somebody enters the class. This is the good old days when we used to have physical classes, okay? Now, uh, so this is the baseline and look at the difference of this and then compare it here. Look at the difference here. So this, this difference shows you that a fiber, uh, a muscle spindle fiber, which is under the gamma efferent uh, control or activation is very sensitive to any change in stretch of the muscle. Yes, I think we have killed it. We have discussed it properly. And now to finish things off, just look at what's happening here. Now instead of uh, static, he has uh, activated the dynamic gamma. Uh, Again, before the stretching of the whole muscle, you see that uh, it doesn't really respond much here because it's dynamic. However, during the overall stretching of the muscle, it really kicks off. So if you compare it with the top two diagrams, you can clearly see it peaking to 200, around 200 uh, uh, impulses per second. Uh, this is the enhanced gamma uh, uh, dynamic response of a muscle spindle fiber which is being innervated uh, at the same time by the dynamic gamma fiber. Okay, And even after the stretch, the, the, the anger you can still, it's still there. And th look at the difference. This is the peak and this is after the peak right here. And look at the difference. If I were to draw a line here, let me draw it here. here and around here. The difference is obviously very clear. Big difference. Big difference. And this is smaller difference. Okay, it's hardly, I can hardly make that arrow. Okay, I hope this is clear. Please uh, give it a review afterwards. This, welcome back. I was saying because this is important and that's that. Now, the rest is, uh, as they say, chemistry. Um, we will go back to our normal view. Uh, so you understand this now. Just have a read through. This is just to give you in text what we have discussed on the graph. See if anything jumps out, any questions come up. I think the heading is also very nice. Uh, 
gamma motor nerves set the sensitivity of the muscle spindle okay uh, the intensity of the static and dynamic both responses get enhanced by the gamma motor the dynamic gamma of the nuclear bag tremendously enhances the dynamic response while static gamma at the chain enhances the static response okay this is pretty straightforward any questions on this i i doubt it if there are any any questions okay so uh, a, a a little bit uh, these are phasic receptors okay and uh, what well there are phasic receptors a uh, and 2 uh, the gamma efferents are have a constant basal level discharge all the time so your muscle spindles imagine your muscle spindles to be under the influence of some basic level of gamma discharge all the time uh, so the when the muscle during in this setup when the muscle stretches the spinal cord gets positive signals by positive signals it, what what is meant is uh, whatever basal discharge uh, average number of impulses it was receiving now when you have stretched the muscles the impulses will really shoot up so the spinal cord will calculate that that the muscle has stretched okay and negative signals means that those the the that barrage of action potentials have gone down uh, in the in the minus and uh, this this means that there has been unstretching of the muscle okay this is the summary this is a summary of uh, pretty much what we have discussed since yesterday so it's a very good slide for your tutorial if you're to welcome back uh, please have a discussion around this whole thing and you'll be you'll be good uh, also from the exam point of view this 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 information which is on this slide is very important okay they might not go into graphical analysis that like we have done to to give you that extra edge of understanding however this is the bread and butter of uh, um, uh motor uh, uh, muscle spindle static and dynamic responses so this is all you need to know okay so that's that and finally some very cool take home messages check this out so the quick muscles fingers quick muscles they are rich in bag fibers i e dynamic response data is generated more in these type of muscles okay this is this should not be anything new to you now however this is a nice packaging kind of information which holds the whole thing together okay we have done this in bits now we are just putting it as a as a slogan so the quickies the quick contraction muscles are actually they have more back fibers in their muscle spindles than chain fibers and hence they generate more dynamic response data than their slower cousins okay secondly uh, for these quick muscles the cns preferably monitors the rate of change of length and you now understand what this means in the context of that dynamic response okay and uh, the bulk movement muscles remember the bulk muscles i talked about the muscles of the back the anti gravity muscles the muscles which are mainly dealing with the amount of uh, uh, change in length okay not too much uh, concerned with the rate of change okay they are actually anatomically rich in chain type nuclear chain fibers hence they generate static response data and the cns preferably monitors changes in whole length rather than rate of change in them so this is that practical tying in the of the whole academic discussion that we were having since yesterday uh, uh the practical implications are very very um, clear that there are two types the quick muscles and the bulk movement muscles these are my words you can use what you can just imagine whatever you whatever helps you so more uh, welcome back so more dynamic response coming out of these muscles more static response coming out of these muscles and both responses tell the cns what is happening in these two types of muscles okay this would be the end of today today's lecture
if you don't have any questions do you have any questions about this the slide it was really a tying up slide really nothing new uh hafza same here yes actually uh that's not a bad idea let's discuss that on whatsapp okay because i do notice that there are even right now there are only 84 so all the hubulu about uh students uh, uh, going above 100 is really uh, it's not real so i i i do tend to think that this is uh, this has traction this zoom idea however i won't be able to do this on zoom so this is also uh this is an issue let me think about it give send me your suggestions okay so just tell me if there are no questions here put your attendance and off you go okay no questions fine we'll have a poll we'll have a poll on this don't worry we will include everybody's uh, scenario uh, suggestion inshallah <clears throat> so in the next lecture we will be discussing muscle spindle the role of muscle spindle in stretch reflex inshallah just to tell you telling you guys okay tomorrow today's uh, tutorial is very important uh, you know they have distributed uh, sensory and motor tutorial each week so last week you did your tutorial in sensory physiology today is motors uh, part so please participate fully uh, ask questions comment be active about it solius boss wake up okay theek hai do we have all the tenants i think we do chalo okay guys take care assalam alaikum